it's just unreal. Um, when he came back at me, you know, 16, 10, 16, 15, I was struggling so much. Um, I didn't fancy winning at all, to be honest. I was absolutely gone. Um, I knew I needed a good chance to, I don't know, to, to settle down again, feel calm again. And in the last room, I was, I was okay, actually, mm. when I made the break. I was so focused and I just wanted the perfect angle on every shot. I just, I, I didn't want any difficult shots. Um, the first pink was quite difficult, I potted. Um, but apart from that, my cue ball was quite good and it was phew, such an intense relief to get over the line, it's crazy. Can I ask you, when you potted frame ball, what was going through your mind in that moment? Yeah, just a lot of things, you know. Um, all the stories I heard about myself, about not being good enough and things like this. And, and all, but also the positive thoughts, like my family is here, my best friends are here, my girlfriend is here. And it's just an unbelievable moment for me. It's so special. Um, and if I would have lost that, I would have felt so bad for so long, which I normally don't do. Um, but yeah, I had so much pressure on myself and there was only one way and that was, that was winning today. When was, what age were you when the, the, this dream started? That this about this silver trophy here. Um, to be honest, I've never really been a person to think about winning uh, specific tournaments, uh, not even the world championships. I just love playing because I mean I've, I've won this now, and uh, in two days I'm going to Vienna to play the Vienna Open, which is fantastic. That's cool. Yeah, just a pro am cool. tournament, you know, and that's the way I am. I just love playing on that table, um, and it doesn't really matter where. But um, yeah, this is just the ultimate dream come true and uh, still I, I, won't, I won't believe it for quite some time. Can we talk about the contribution your parents have made to you, Morella and Carlo? People often speak about you and your dad being very much a partnership, drives you everywhere, back to Belgium, back to the UK, constantly. Just how much of a contribution has he made to your life and to your career? Yeah, unbelievable. I've, I've said it many times, you know, without them, I wouldn't be the same person and the same player because they give me so much confidence and um, and the difficult times, you know, when I first started as a professional, um, yeah, fantastic. Mm. <laughs> when I first started as a professional, you know, the first years were so tough. Uh, it was from Belgium to England, a long drive, lose first round, go back. And like this for a whole season, you know, the first season was so tough. And he was the one who just kept believing in me, uh, maybe even more than I did in myself. And uh, yeah, that's, that's just... Um, yeah, so so fantastic for for I him as well. I asked Jimmy about coming back as a sorry, sorry Jimmy. Go no, ahead. I'm just going to say, you know, when Mark Selby come back at you because you know we know how brilliant he is and what a fighter he is. You know, you you hit quite a few balls thick. Yeah. yeah. And then and then you made a fantastic fifty break. Yeah. To get to seventeen, you went outside, regroup, reset, and you looked quite calm in that last frame. Yeah. At the interval when it was sixteen thirteen, I, I said to my my team, I said. I just need that 17 on the board. Yeah. Because I know if I, if I just need one frame, then I'm at my absolute best most mm. of the time. And, um, yeah, it's always in those situations I get um, the best out of myself. So I just needed that 17, and then I knew I was going to be fine. I tell you what, you've done it in style from start to finish, from day yeah. one to today. Yeah, that's, the incredible that's, stuff. that's the most pleasing part. Mm. Maybe because Play it your way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Could we talk about how tough it's been, sort of, I've known about you for a very long time. People talk about your talent. You came here in 2012 for the very first time. It took a long time to get across the line. But the pressure on your shoulders, Jimmy had it himself, coming here as a teenager. How tough has that been? Um, yeah, um, to be honest, not, not that tough because I'm not a person that lets it get to me. But, um, yeah, just, I mean, just this World Championship has been, been very tough for me because I've never won a game here. And uh, this year I, I came here just wanting to wanting to win one game, you know, and <laughs> now I've won the championship, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been a difficult road uh, for me. Um, but I've also, I've had some great moments already in my career. I'm only 28 and still a long way to go, you know, and um, I still enjoy playing as much as I ever done before. And this is the perfect, um, perfect result for me to, to go further in my career, I think. You were already a, a big star in Belgium, Luca. What's this going to do for Belgian and European mainland snooker? It's going to hopefully explode, I, I would imagine. Yeah, it's definitely going to explode. Um, I would never imagine it to be like this. Um, 
because, I mean, the newspapers were all going mad and so many people texting me. It's been absolutely crazy. And now that I've won it, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but it's, it's going to be so fantastic. And, um, yeah, I'm so proud of myself uh, for, for holding myself together in this situation because it's, I was under so much pressure because I just wanted it to happen for Belgium and for Europe and for snooker in, in, in general. And I'm sure Dills in Stockholm will be very proud of you, isn't you're putting them on the map. It wasn't a place I was aware of apart from in reference to yourself. Now, the world champion comes from there. A small population, 20,000 people, but you're the proudest export. Yeah, uh, that's where I was, where I was, I was born in Dilsa. But I moved to Masmechela for maybe 10 or 15 years now, so it's actually Masmechela, but <laughs> it's very close to each other. And uh, yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> Could you possibly give a message? Because obviously, I think it's Flemish that you, yeah, you speak. Flemish, yeah. um, just to the camera there, for anyone who's watching at home, because you're a sport, it's pan-Europe. You are now the first mainland European champion ever at the Crucible. Would you like to give a message in Flemish to your people? Yeah. Hey, lieve mensen, bedankt voor de steun. Ik heb zoveel berichten gehad de laatste tijd. En het is heel moeilijk om op ze allemaal te antwoorden. Maar ik doe mijn best. Ik probeer ze allemaal te lezen. En anders leest iemand anders wel en gaat ze, gaan ze die aan mij doorgeven. Dus uh, super bedankt voor alle steun. Het is echt uh, een ongelooflijke rit geweest. En uh, ja, fantastisch voor jullie ook. Uh, dit is echt voor mijn fans die altijd in mij geloofden. En ja, hopelijk nog, uh, nog veel die eraan mogen komen. Fantastisch. En ik moet zeggen, dit is going to surprise you a little bit. My Flemish isn't that strong. What, what did you say? Uh, just thank my fans because I mean they've been so supportive the last few days. Awesome. And, um, yeah, it's it's crazy to be, um, you know, the only top player in Belgium. Uh, obviously, we have Ben Mertens and Julia as well, which is great for the game. Um, but yeah, I feel so much support and uh, it feels like everyone loves me and that's just a fantastic feeling. And it also puts a bit of pressure on because you want to do well for them as well. And uh, so, yeah, this is the perfect moment. And can I ask you this, finally, people might see you as a very talented player, work very hard. They wouldn't necessarily know that you were homeschooled. You had to make a decision early on in your life to dedicate yourself to this sport, and this is the culmination of that sacrifice. Yeah, and also that's because of my parents, you know. They took the risk. They invested a lot of money in me uh, without any guarantee of getting it ever back. You know, it's, uh, especially at the time when I was young, the prize money wasn't so high, so it was a really, really big risk. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just unbelievable. And uh, it's, it's the same with Ben and, and Juliet. They, their parents are the same. They also took a big risk. And hopefully for them, it's going to work out as well. And um, yeah, that's, that's what you need in sports. You know, a good team around you. Your dad's one of, the, one of my favourite people on the tour because I, I was telling these guys before you came in and he's just one of those quiet, cool guys around yeah. the, isn't he? That's he's just great. genuine. Yeah, he, oh, absolutely. He, he just, doesn't he, try to be anything he he's just done. just <laughs> pick the balls out and you say, yeah. oh, look, he's going all right. Well, <laughs> yeah. He's one of those, isn't he? Just yeah. a cool, cool guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He Fantastic, is, yeah. yeah. And so in 11 and a half months' time when you're back here, is the plan going to be party, have a few cocktails <laughs> and 17 minutes practice? Because that seems to be the formula that works for you. Yeah, it's a crazy story, but normally I'm not like that, to be honest. Um, I've been quite dedicated, actually, in my life. Uh, I used to be quite fit and run a lot and practice every day. And this was just something different. It's not going to be like this forever. And uh, But it's it's a fantastic story, I think. 